What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the Crazy Cycling Channel. This should be video number five of me fixing up this 2009 Specialized Globe 3. In the last video, I adjusted the gears and the brakes and this bike is totally rideable and pretty much good to go, but I forgot about the headset. So in this video, I'm gonna rebuild the headset, basically clean it out and re-grease the bearings. And I'm also gonna attempt to rebuild the pedals. I've never rebuilt pedals before but I watched a tutorial on RJ the Bike Guy's channel and it should be pretty straightforward. It seems like some pedals take a special tool to take apart, especially a Shimano SPD pedals or maybe just Shimano pedals in general. But these basic pedals should be pretty easy, so I'm gonna do that. And that'll be the day. Hopefully this won't take too long. Let's get right into it uh, and start taking this headset apart. Right, so this is a quill stem. You can tell because there is a bolt at the top of the stem. Threadless stems are a little bit different. But if you have a quill stem, the first thing you want to do is find the right Allen key. Might be five millimeter, maybe four millimeter, um, maybe it's six millimeter. And then you just want to loosen off that, that bolt. You don't want to remove it completely though. You just want to loosen it a little bit. Or maybe it's not six millimeter, maybe it is six millimeter. So just loosen it off a little bit. And then get yourself a hammer and give the bolt a whack. In this case, I can't reach the bolt. So uh, let's whack the Allen wrench instead. Okay, I'm just gonna give this a smack and that should drive the bolt down a little bit. And basically inside the quill stem, there are two pieces of metal that are cut at an angle and the bolt fits into the bottom piece. And as you tighten, it pulls against the top piece and wedges the whole stem inside the steer tube and you loosen that by giving the bolt a smack. So let's see if this is seized or if this is loose. That is nice and loose. So now we can ideally, hopefully, pull the stem right out of the steer tube. Yep, there we go. And I've got all these brake lines attached and stuff, but I'm just gonna let that, whoops, kind of dangle there or maybe, uh, well, let's just let that dangle for now. This won't take too long. Uh, so yeah, the next thing is to start taking the headset apart. I just thought I'd show you how a quill stem works real quick. So the bolt from the top of the stem screws into this metal piece here. And as it tightens, you can see that it slides along that angled cut on the stem itself. And that wedges it in against the inside of the steerer tube. And that's what uh, holds your quill stem in place. The advantage of a quill stem is that it's super, super easy to adjust. You can slide this up and down very, very easily. Um, so it's really good for a bike like this where you want a nice upright riding position. Right, so the next thing to do is to remove the top cap. So as you can see, there are two nuts here. The top one is basically just a lock nut and that tightens against this bottom one and holds it in place. And the bottom one is actually the bearing cone. So that presses against the bearings, which also sit against this uh, bearing race, this top bearing race here. So once you remove that lower nut, the fork can drop out of the head tube completely, so you wanna be a bit careful. Uh, but to do this, you can use some tools like this. These are headset wrenches or a pliers wrench, but you'll probably need two, two tools. So let's see what size that is. Is that 36? Nope, is it 35? I think they're usually 32, but that looks like it could be, that is a 35 millimeter, I think. Or maybe it is a 36 millimeter. What size are you? It was a 36 millimeter. Let's see if the top is one of the other ones. No, it's not. So let's get the pliers wrench. And the good thing about a pliers wrench is that they open super, super wide. When I bought this pliers wrench, I was specifically thinking about headsets. So that can grab onto there. This 36 millimeter headset wrench holds the bottom one. Turn counterclockwise. And we've loosened off the top nut there. I'm also smacking into the tripod, so <laughs> sorry about that. Let's see here. This particular top cap is kind of tight on there. There we go. Now it's nice and loose. So now I can just remove this little locking nut. If there are any washers in here, you just want to keep track of the order. Sometimes there are. Yep, there's two. There's a tall one and then a short one. So this is the order. So I'm going to put this down like so. 
you know what, at this point, I'm actually gonna remove the front wheel as well as the brake cable, just so that I can drop the fork out completely without having too much weight and without anything falling on the ground. So let me just do that real quick. And then we'll take off this top bearing cup. Right, so now the wheel's gone, the brake cable's gone, and the handlebars are still dangling here, but I can't really take all these cables out, so that's just gonna have to sit there like that. But at least at this point, I can now remove this uh, second um, top cap, which is the bearing cone. And again, you just wanna be careful because your fork can drop out of the frame, and there's bearings underneath the head tube as well. Uh, so if stuff does start to fall out, you just wanna make sure that it all stays around the steerer tube. But this was that 36 millimeter, was it? Yes, it was. 36 millimeter uh, headset wrench or a big crescent wrench or whatever. And that just loosened off. So now let's just go ahead and unthread this. Okay, we finally got to the top of the steerer tube. So as you can see, I can now take out this bearing cone. Uh, so the bearings will ride against that. And then you probably can't really see it, but there are, well, actually there's a little seal here, just a weather seal. And then down in there are all my headset bearings. And then we have the same thing on the other side of the head tube. So now I'm gonna drop the fork out and see if those bearings will come with, yep. And then I'll pull the bearings out here. There they are, they're in a little retaining clip. And now we're gonna just take everything out and basically just uh, clean it. So I'm just gonna get a rag and wipe out the um, headset, uh, the top race and the bottom race. I never know what they're called, but I'm gonna wipe out the races, wipe off the bearings. You can use a solvent if you want, but it's not really necessary. You can just use a rag, especially if everything is still in good condition like it is here. This is kind of just a little bit black, but it's, it's still greased up. It's not pitted or anything. Uh, so I'm just gonna wipe this all down and then we'll basically come back and put everything back together again. Okay, so now I've cleaned everything, including the bearing races here at the top and the bottom of the head tube. Actually, I'm never really sure which parts are the races, what's the cups and what's the cones, but you basically just wanna get in there and wipe everything out really well with a rag. And now it's time to start reinstalling the headset. So the first thing you wanna do is just run a nice uh, layer of grease all around this top bearing race, or you can do the bottom one first, it doesn't really matter. But you wanna use some kind of a thick grease, like this Park PPL1 is pretty good, or you can use um, marine grease, or I'm sure there's lots of other grease that would work. Just something kind of thick, because the purpose of this is, first of all, obviously to lubricate the bearings, but also to keep the water out as best as possible. Um, and yeah, so once you've done that, then you wanna put your bearings back. And if you're wondering which way they go, basically you want this uh, little ring on the top because you want the actual balls to contact the inside of that race. And then you'll have a cone, I guess, or another piece that will contact these bearings from the inside. So just drop that in like so. And then we're gonna just put some more grease on top of those bearing balls as well. And then the next step would be to do the exact same thing on the bottom of the head tube, which I'm probably not going to show you. I'll just do that, but it's exactly the same. It looks exactly the same. And once you've done that, you can uh, push the um, fork back through the head tube. I just thought I'd show you the other side of the fork real quick, and it's basically the same thing. You just want to put a nice bead of grease all along that bearing race. And you wanna go kind of heavy on the grease because again, that is part of the waterproofing of the headset. And then you wanna take your bearing and in this case, your race here is gonna contact the bearing balls kind of from the inside. So the retaining clip faces down and just slide that onto the uh, steer tube there. And then I'm gonna slide the fork through, but I've also already greased up the inside of this bearing cup uh, just so that everything gets covered in grease when I slip the fork through. Okay, so now I've slid the fork through the head tube and then you just wanna put everything else back in order. In this case, the bearings are already in there and I have put quite a lot of grease on top of the bearings. And then in my case, I have a seal that goes on next. There usually will be some sort of a seal here. And then the, uh, top, uh, the top cap, which is 
I guess I'd call that a cone. I don't know if that's a raise, whatever that is, but basically this little top cap just needs to screw on. And this just needs to screw, if I can get it on there, uh, all the way down till it contacts the bearing balls. There we go. So I'll just screw that all the way down basically till it's kind of finger tight. Okay, and then you don't want to just wrench down on this because turning this is what sets the tension on your bearings. And you basically want it tight enough so that there is no slop in the steer tube, which is easier to check with the wheel in and the bike on the ground. But you also still want the bearing to turn freely. This seems a little bit stiff to me, although I have this uh, handlebars dangling here as well, so I'll have to check again. But I'll just loosen that a little bit. And that feels pretty good to me. So now I'm going to get the uh, two washers and the lock nut and then tighten everything down. Okay, so now you want to tighten the top cap. And in this case, you do want to tighten that pretty significantly because that is going to lock the position of the uh, bottom nut. So you could turn it like this, but sometimes that will cause the bottom nut to actually come undone. So one thing you can do is you can actually just hold on to the fork and then start tightening the top cap. And just make sure that the nut underneath is not turning. And then once you get to the point where it's pretty tight, just kind of double check that this is all where you want it, that the tension is, is set properly. And then you want to go ahead and get your um, wrench on this bottom nut and your other wrench on the top cap. And then you can get that nice and tight and that will lock everything together. And then you do kind of want to check this again later on. But for now, we can go ahead and put the uh, stem back in. Okay, so something that I've never thought about for some reason is whether or not to grease a quill stem. And I just Googled this and there's not much information at all. Um, but I'm gonna just apply a little bit of grease to this, I think. Now, in most situations, I like anti-seize more, but this headset area is full of grease anyway. So I'm just gonna go with that. And I just wanna apply a little bit just to prevent this from seizing. And I'm also gonna apply a little bit to the wedge as well. And then I'll go ahead and reinstall the handlebars. So I'm just gonna just put a little bit on here and I'll probably just use my finger to wipe that around or maybe I can get a rag. I think I'll get a rag just to keep my fingers clean. And I'll just apply a really thin film and then we'll put the handlebars back through the steerer tube. Okay, so I've actually decided to go for a bit of a compromise and I've greased the stem, but I've not greased the wedge. And my thinking there is that you can always undo the bolt here and give that a whack and that should break the uh, wedge free, but these quill stems can get seized. I've seen that before. So I think it's a good idea to put a little bit of grease on that, but we'll see if I can tighten it now. But I'm just gonna go ahead now and just reinstall the stem. And again, the good thing about a quill stem is you can basically set it up how you want. Now I am gonna have to go back and just double check that everything is lined up and straight, but just for demonstration, let's say I want the stem at this height, then you would just go in here with a uh, Allen key. This is a six millimeter Allen key and tighten that down. And then you wanna tighten that quite a bit. There probably is a torque spec on that, but basically it's gonna be pretty tight. So I'm gonna just, you know, not, not start breaking stuff here, but you just wanna wedge that against the inside of the steer tube sufficiently so that uh, nothing can slip. And that's not moving, so I'd say that's probably tight enough, but I'm just gonna go through now and double check that everything is straight, and then I'll put the wheel back in and reconnect the brake cable. Okay, I've got the bike back together now. I've also readjusted the brake and I've centered the handlebars and just made sure everything is perpendicular and parallel and just lined up the way it should be. And now the next thing I'm gonna do is just double check the tension on the bearing. So I'll just lift the bike off the ground and just rotate the handlebars and just make sure it's nice and loose, which it is. I mean, not loose to the point that things are moving, but free, which this is. And then I'll grab the front brake, put my other hand around the top of the headset and rock the bike back and forth. And you should feel no movement at all in this headset, which I don't. So that means that this headset is properly adjusted. If the headset were not moving freely, I'd have to loosen the, um, 
just loosen both nuts here and then back off the uh, lower one a little bit. And if I were, if I had felt movement here when I were, was rocking the bike back and forth, um, that means that your bearings are too loose and you have to tighten, basically tighten that bottom nut and then lock everything together again. It's just a bit of trial and error, but you should be able to get it where it's both smooth and that there's no play in the system. Okay, so now the next thing I'm gonna do is to attempt to rebuild the pedals. And like I said before, I've never done pedals before, but it seems pretty straightforward. Basically, there should be a cap on the outside of each pedal, and you can pry that cap off and gain access to the nut, which holds the pedal to the spindle and tensions up the bearings. And then you can take everything apart and re-grease it. But really the first step should be to take the pedals off, but in this case, these pedals are completely seized. Another good reason to use anti-seize. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to attempt to um, get the pedals unseized. Now, one way of doing this is you could uh, take the crank arm off and put this whole thing in the freezer, or you could put your bike outside if you, have, if you happen to be in a place where it's really, really cold, like say below freezing, or you could position the bike such that you can dip the end of the crank arm and the pedal into a bucket of ice and basically the aluminum crank arm will uh, contract at a different rate from the steel spindle and that'll break the bond between the crank arm and the pedal spindle. Um, but that'll take some time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attempt to actually get the pedal undone first and then I'm gonna try and hit the uh, crank arm just lightly with a, just a plumber's torch and see if I can get that bond to break that way. So let's go ahead and get in there and see if I can get the uh, pedal taken apart. By the way, remember if you are taking pedals off that the, I believe it's the left side of the bike is reverse threaded. So you'll have to turn towards the right to get that pedal out. But this one here is just a regular uh, right hand thread. So it's turning to the left and pedals are either a 15 millimeter wrench, which is a pedal wrench, but I don't have one. So you could use a cone wrench, or in this case, my pliers wrench fits on there or some pedals take uh, an Allen key. I think it's a, a six or an eight millimeter Allen key, um, but that's how you take pedals off. But in this case, um, I have tried a lot to get this pedal off. So let's go ahead and try and get the pedal taken apart instead. Okay, so to gain access to the nut, this cap should just pry off of there, I think. And I can see that there's a gap. So let's see if I can get a little, a screwdriver in there first and then we'll maybe change to a different tool, but I think that is moving on me. Yep, that's definitely moving. So I'll just kind of work my way around there and yep, I got, I got a gap, or at least I got to some clean plastic. Now some pedals do need special tools to take apart, but I don't believe this one does. And yep, there we are. There is access to the uh, pedal nut. Let's see if my crank tool will take that nut off, otherwise I'll have to go find a socket somewhere. Okay, so this is the Park CCW5. It's actually a crank tool, but it has a socket on one end. Let's see if that's the same socket uh, as the pedal end. No, it's not, so I need to go find a socket set, unfortunately, because I don't think I have anything in my bike kit to take that apart, which is annoying because I usually don't consider a socket set to be necessary, um, but luckily there is one in the house here that I can borrow, so I'm gonna go get that and then we'll take that uh, little nut apart. Okay, so it turns out that that nut is a 12 millimeter socket. So let's see if I can get that undone. And I, I think this is just a regular uh, right-hand thread. So let's try and turn that to the left. No, to the left tighten. So that must be a right-hand thread. It's probably left-hand on the other side of the bike. Well, that feels like that's tightening as well. What's going on? Maybe, it just ran into some resistance. Let's try and turn to the left again. Whoa. Oh no, that's loose now. Okay. Well, it's a regular right hand thread. And yep, that's pulling off of there. There we go. And now let's see if the pedal slides off. Uh, no, because of course that is a lock nut. So it's just like the headset. So now I need to take the other nut off. And of course the other one isn't a 12 mil, it's, it's bigger. Okay, so that's weird. So a 12 millimeter definitely doesn't fit, but a 13 seems to be too big 
I tried some imperial sizes as well and nothing quite seems right. So now I'm just gonna try and just pull that because maybe that's not a nut, but it sure looks like a nut in there. Why is that not coming off? Hmm. Definitely a bit strange. Um, let's try the crank tool again. Okay, so I tried the 12 mil socket on the second nut and that seemed too small. Then I tried a 13 and that seemed too big. Uh, so I tried some imperial sizes and none of them seemed to fit either. So then I started thinking, okay, maybe this is just pressed onto there and maybe I can just pull it off or tap it with a hammer. So I tried that and nothing moved. Then I thought, okay, maybe uh, it's, a, it's not a hex socket, maybe it's a special tool. But I had a little look and it certainly looked like a hex nut. And then finally I realized that there's actually a washer in between the two nuts. So I'm going to try and take a pick like that and see if I can just pull that washer off. This is a little bit tricky, but hopefully that will give me access to a normal, uh, just a normal hex nut underneath. Let's see. Okay, so there's that little washer. It's got little uh, notches cut into it to fit into some grooves in the spindle. And now I'll try the sockets again and see if I can get the second nut off. Okay, so I can't really tell what size that nut is, but the 14 millimeter socket seems to be turning it. So I'm just gonna keep turning and just get it out of there. It's not really in there very tight because that probably is what's preloading the bearing. So let's get that out of there. Yep, there's that second little nut. Let's try and grab that and not drop it on the floor. And now I think the pedal will just slide off the spindle, but there might be some bearings back here that will fall out. Yeah, I can see a bunch of loose, oh, loose ball bearings. Yep, loose ball bearings on both sides of the spindle. Um, but yeah, now I'm gonna actually just clean off all these bearings and catch them so I don't drop them, regrease everything, and then put it together. So let's go clean everything, and then I'll try and get the spindle off real quick in the meantime. Okay, so now I've cleaned the pedal spindle, which is still attached to the crank arm here as well as the races on the inside of the pedal. And by the way, there were 26 teeny tiny little bearing balls mixed in with all the stuff I pulled out. So I guess that's 13 per side, 13 at either end of the spindle. And I'll show you that in a minute, but before I put this pedal back together, I'm gonna just try and get this spindle out of the crank arm again, because again, this is pretty seized in there. So I'm just gonna try and um, just get it out with the pliers wrench. And if I can't, I was gonna try it with a torch, but I can't find the torch, so Let's just see if I can get it out first, and um, then I'll decide what to do. But I, I don't really have high hopes for this. This is pretty stuck in there. But uh, this is the right side of the bike, so this should be just normal threaded. So I should have to turn to the left. And I did just confirm that on another bike. Let's just adjust that a little bit. Again, the only problem with the pliers wrench is the adjustment is not always as fine as you need. Yeah, that's, that's really seized in there. I can't, I can't budge that at all. So um, I really don't want to start taking this apart again, but I think the prudent thing to do is to take the crank side apart again. I'll put this side in the freezer and then I'll work on the pedal from the other side while that's cooling down and maybe I can get it apart then. Right, so I've taken the other side of the bike apart now and the crank arm I put in the freezer isn't cold yet. So what I've done is I've created a concoction here of water with ice cubes and a whole bunch of salt. And I stuck the other pedal arm into the water and I'm gonna try and cool it down that way. And hopefully that will break the bond between the aluminum and the steel. This actually should work. If you Google how to do this, this method comes up. Um, I wouldn't recommend it though, if you haven't taken your pedal apart because you'll get salt water in the bearings and screw them up. But uh, in this case, everything is apart. I'll rinse it off right away with clean water. Um, but let's just try and get the uh, spindle unstuck now and maybe this will work. Um, this is the right crank arm and oh yeah, that's kind of getting cold. And I need to turn that to the right. So let's just give it a try and see what happens. Kind of an awkward angle there. Nope, that's, that's really, really stuck on there. Um, 
I'll let that soak a few more minutes. And before the salt water starts corroding the steel, we'll try again. All right, now let's try something which is not recommended <laughs> and resort to violence. So I'm gonna hit the, try and squeeze that tight and Nope, that's definitely not moving either. I'll try to put my weight on there again. Man, I might have to admit defeat on that one, but before we do, I'll try and freeze it again and maybe tomorrow I'll try and hit it with a torch if I can get one somewhere. I think my brother has one. Um, but yeah, that is really stuck on there. You know what? I think it just budged. Let's try that again. Yeah, there we go. That is, that is turning, but it's really, it was really on there. Let's see if I can finish getting it off and then we'll right away go rinse this in some, in some, uh, I'm turning it the wrong way again, in some, there we go. Yeah. We'll right away go rinse this in some fresh water and then try the other side. But uh, man, Put anti-seize on your pedals. You don't want that to happen to you. Yeah, there we go. There's uh, actually some grease on there. So whoever installed this did use grease, but grease obviously wasn't enough. So I would say anti-seize or make sure you take your pedals off at least once in a while because these have been on there probably more than a decade. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna rinse those really, really well. And then I'll try the other side. Okay, here's the other side now. I've already tried to take that spindle off once and it's also really, really tight. Um, and also it's hard to grab this one because of the chain ring. So I'm gonna use a chain whip and let's see if I can break that one free. I'll try and be kind of fast here. This one, of course, I need to turn to the left. So I need to remember what I'm doing there. Let's see how the best way to do this is. Maybe like that. I know you probably can't see that, but let's go try. Nope. That just breaks my hand. Okay, so now let's try a rag. This video wasn't supposed to be how to take a uh, seized spindle off a crank arm, but uh, that's kind of what it's turning into. I'm gonna try and be fast here again. What's the, I don't really know. The problem is there's a plastic guard there, which I don't wanna break if I can help it. So yes, turning to the left, I'll try and push on the chain rings. Nope, that's, that's pretty tight on there. Back in the ice water. The reason you wanna put salt in there, of course, is because salt will depress the freezing point. So this water is now below freezing. I put a lot of salt in there. Um, so yeah, it should be nice and cold. Um, and this does work. I have done this before when I had uh, the pedals seized on my gravel bike and I had the bike outside. And after the bike was outside for a while in, in the winter, I could get them off. Um, so yeah, it's either this, try a torch or buy new crank arms. I don't think, I don't really know the, another method of doing this. You can probably try penetrating oil, but that sort of stuff usually doesn't work very well. Um, but yeah, let's just try that again and then I'll stop filming and just get on with this. But yeah, that's, it is very, very cold. Let's see here. Okay, well, believe it or not, after a lot of persistence, I got the other spindle out as well. So now I can show you how to rebuild the pedals. So this is the pedal spindle, and uh, here's one of the races. And I found that the races on these pedals were really, really crusty. There was a lot of like baked on black crud. So clearly these pedals have been in the weather. I think that's really common with pedal uh, bearings. In fact, pedals really commonly go kind of bad after a while. And um, I'm glad that I've done this now so I know how to rebuild them. Um, but basically I cleaned everything really well. I couldn't just wipe that crud off. I had to use, uh, I used some WD-40, which kind of works well as a mild degreaser sometimes. And now it's time to put everything together. I'm also gonna just use some new bearing balls. I have, I bought these a while ago and um, you know, just kind of for occasions like this uh, when to be honest, it's just not really worth the time to try and clean those uh, little tiny balls because this stuff here was so crusty. So I'm just gonna 
uh, use these. These are 1 8 inch bearing balls and the pedals take 13 per side. And the other side of the race, or I guess the cup or whatever you want to call that is still there in the spindle. I just wiped that out, sprayed that with WD-40 and let it dry. So um, let's go ahead now and I'll start at the um, side closest to this end of the spindle, which is this side of the pedal that goes through like so. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just go ahead and put some grease in there and then I'll count out um, 13 of those balls and set them into the grease so they don't fall through the pedal and embed them into, uh, just place them into that bearing race. Okay, so as you can hopefully see there, I've put a decent amount of grease uh, into that bearing cup and then I've placed the bearings. These are tiny little bearings, so it's a bit tricky to just maneuver them, but there's 13 there now and now I'm just going to put a, a nice amount of grease on this part of the bearing. I guess that's a I think this part is actually the race and that part is called the cup, but it's, it's hard to know because with, um, or I guess I don't really know and I just haven't bothered to Google it because with ac with, um, with hubs, this would be called the, the cone. So I don't really know, but anyway, uh, I'm now gonna stick the spindle through there and hopefully not dislodge any of those bearings, which seems okay. There we go, that is turning very nice very nicely. And now we have the other side, which will be easier to do because the bearings can't fall out, except that I can't get the grease down there. So <laughs> I'm going to um, very, very carefully, maybe just, maybe I'll just pull the spindle down and see if I can do it that way. I'll just squirt some grease down there kind of gently. That should be fine. That'll kind of work its way around. And then I will start placing the bearing balls. I'll just drop them down, but uh, I don't want them to fall into the pedal, so I'll just hold the spindle up a little bit. But this should take 13, so there we go, one. And yeah, we'll just keep going until we reach 13. Okay, well that is 13 bearings down there, and now I need to install uh, this race. I think I'll try and pull push the spindle through again and make sure it turns on the other end, which it is. So that means that everything is properly seated over there. And then I'll just try and push those bearing, those balls down into place. And hopefully they'll just seat once I install the uh, this race. This is that weird size socket that I couldn't figure out. I think it might be, actually let's check, is that? It's not that size. I. I'm not sure what size that is. It, this doesn't quite fit. This is a 14 millimeter socket, but the 15 doesn't even fit into that gap, but the 14 will turn it. So I'm just going to turn it because it spins onto there so easily. I'm just going to spin that down with uh, this not correct socket until it contacts the bearing balls, and then we'll try and set the tension there as best we can. Okay, well that tensioned up pretty well. This spins nice and smoothly right now. But uh, I'm thinking about squirting some more grease down in there just because, uh, first of all, I think I forgot to grease that race. And also because this is now basically exposed to the elements. It's just that plastic cap that keeps any water out. Um, I think what I might do is I might actually pull, try and pull that out a little bit more and see if I can get some grease down behind that. Uh, and hopefully these balls don't just start flying everywhere. Actually, let's just pull that out. Yeah, let's just squirt a little bit of grease down in there just because, maybe not that much, but, well, I don't think it'll hurt uh, just because I didn't really have any of that and just for waterproofing purposes. And now we'll re reinstall that little cone and uh, then we'll attach the, uh, the outer lock nut. Okay, so I think I've got the tension set pretty well here. Um, it was a little bit just really stiff, so I kind of backed it out a little bit, but now there's no play and this turns very smoothly. It feels like a brand new pedal. And now I'm gonna put this lock nut in place, but first I need to get the washer onto there. And those notches again fit into some cutouts on the spindle, which I think I can see. Yep, that's on there. And then we'll try and get the nut onto there. 
That is again a 12 mil socket. Whoa. Reverse the ratchet there. Nope, that's not gonna work. Try and start that kind of by hand, I guess. There we go, it is just a little bit stiff. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now that's starting to contact the uh, top bearing race. So now obviously I can't adjust anything from within there. So I'm gonna try and use a cone wrench on the other side here. It's a 15 millimeter because it's a 15 millimeter pedal, pedal wrench. Just double check that that is smooth, which it is. And nice and tight. Uh, you know, maybe it's a little tight, but uh, you know, overall that pretty much feels like a new pedal there. So I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side, put the black plastic caps into place again, and then we'll reinstall everything back onto the bike. All right, guys, well, I put the second pedal together as well now, and that one was a little trickier for some reason. It was a little harder to get the tension set on the bearings, but after a little trial and error, that one worked out, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with how both of the pedals turned out. And then I went ahead and put the bike together. I put a lot of anti-seize on the pedals when I attached them to the crank arms, and then I put the cranks back on the bike, and then just double check to make sure that everything works, which it does. So that is the bike pretty much done now, and also, basically how I would overhaul any bike. In video one, I talked about inspecting bikes, and that is good because you wanna do that kind of stuff regularly. But as you saw in this series, after the bike gets beyond a certain age, especially if it hasn't had that maintenance, and by the way, if you go to just get a tune-up at a bike shop, they for sure won't be doing everything I showed you here. It might even be overkill to a certain extent. Um, but anyway, after the bike gets beyond a certain age, things just kind of deteriorate, especially bearings because water gets in there and the grease kind of breaks down and gets gritty and, and full of dirt and stuff. So this bike is basically now totally overhauled and should easily last another 10 years, you know, ideally with a bit of regular maintenance. The only issues I can really think of are um, that the uh, bearing cups in the hubs, some of them were a little bit pitted, uh, not the cups, but the cones, um, but it's kind of a minor issue. This bike, I'm, I'm really happy with how this turned out. And yeah, hopefully that gives you some idea about how you can go overhaul a bike and just my thought process with figuring things out, especially things that I haven't done before, like the pedals. I mean, I hadn't done pedal bearings, but I watched RJ the Bike Guy's video, like I said, and just kind of figured I could, I could do it. And all these bearings kind of work the same. So once you've seen hubs, uh, you can figure out headsets, pedals, and anything else as well. Um, and yeah, I guess the only thing is if you're gonna do something like this, your components might be a little bit different. And there are some specialty things we didn't talk about here like disc brakes, internal hub gearing, fixies, um, which I'm not even familiar with, but uh, different stuff like that. Although I guess if, you know, some people, they only ride fixies, they don't know about gears. But in my case, I don't really know about the fixie stuff, but it's all generally the same idea. So that might be a little bit different in your situation, but hopefully what I've shown you gives you just sort of a general idea about how to go about this. And also, like I said, I will be doing probably another video on the suspension fork as well as the suspension seat post. I'm not gonna call it part of the series and I don't know when I'll get to that because I have a lot of other stuff I'm doing. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the plan. But anyway, I do hope you enjoyed this little mini series. I appreciate you watching, uh, commenting, subscribing, all that fun stuff. And um, yeah, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Maybe I'll see you in another one of my videos or on your channel if you're making videos. Um, and yeah, take care and thanks for watching.